Hi everybody! So lately I've been noticing many many comments saying Hey, Maria, you've been promising us artificial intelligence and machine learning series and you never filmed it! And you guys are 100% right, I did promise it and it's about time we start talking about AI. That's why I've decided to film this quick introduction just to test the ground and see how you guys enjoy the subject. So today we will talk about three different approaches to artificial intelligence. And to be more specific, we will talk about training approaches, which is the stage where your model learns things about the world or the data that the developer presents. Now, the first approach is called supervised learning, and it's the real-life equivalent of a parent and a child relationship where the parent teaches his kid everything about the world. So let's say the parent wants to teach his child about animals for the very first time. He would, of course, take his kid into a farm. He's going to point at a goat, for example, and he's going to tell his kid, this is a goat. And then the parent will point at a chicken and tell his kid, this is a chicken. The more examples of goats and chicken his child is exposed to, the better the chance he'll remember the difference between them. Now, this learning process may take a few visits to the farm, but eventually the parent will be able to point at any type of animal and ask his kid, what animal is this? And if the parent did a good job with training, his kid will give him the correct answer. And if the kid doesn't get it right, it either means that more visits to the farm are required, or it means that the parent doesn't really teach him well. And this example of a parent trying to teach his child something new is very similar to our relationship between a developer and a neural network that needs to learn something new as well. So whenever we take this real-life example into the realm of computers, we are basically providing our neural network with a labeled dataset. This entire dataset is organized into pairs of features and targets also known as input and output. The features, in the particular case of our goat versus chicken neural network, would be images of either goats or chickens. The targets will then correspond to either a string saying goat or saying chicken, all depends on the input image. So with our features, we are pointing at an animal, and with our target, we are explaining the name of the animal to our neural network. That's why supervised learning is providing us 100% control of the information that we are exposing our neural network to, and we are also controlling the conclusions about that information, which would be the labels. And then whenever we would like this network to make a prediction, we will expose it to a picture of either a goat or a chicken that it has never seen before. It is a brand new picture that I just took with my own phone, and I will show it to the network. Then, just like our kid, our network will be able to predict whether it's a chicken or a goat. If it gets it right, good job, our network is very accurate. If it gets it wrong, it means that it might need a few more epochs, a few more visits to the farm, or it means that the developer, the parent, still need to put a little bit of work into his code. He may have missed something, and as a result, his neural network is not training well on the data. And because us developers have so much control over these neural networks, that's the type of networks I will teach you how to build on my channel. And if you want to see a good example of such a network, check out my GitHub, where I have my What the Flower project, which is a neural network that classifies between different kinds of flowers. I actually created a GUI for it, so you guys can definitely test it with your own pictures from your own computer. Another training approach is called unsupervised learning or self-supervised learning, and it corresponds to taking your kid into the same farm, pointing at the same goat, but saying nothing. And then you would point at the chicken and also say nothing. Eventually, your kid will realize that there's something wrong with you and he needs to take things into his own hands. He will then realize that this animal has four legs, while the other animal has two legs and two wings. He wouldn't know that the four-legged animal is called goat, and he wouldn't know that the two-legged animal is called chicken. However, he'll be able to differentiate between them without any problem. Now, if we take this into the world of computers, 
That means we are providing an unlabeled data set to our neural network. So in the case of unsupervised learning, we are either passing a data set that only contains features or we're passing a data set where the features and the targets are the exact same value. And even though it may seem that us developers are losing a bit of grip with these type of models, we are actually still 100% in charge of the features. So whether if our model chooses to call goat zero and chicken one, it doesn't matter. It still categorizes, classifies our animals perfectly. So I don't see any issues with these models either. If you guys want to learn about them on my channel, we will also cover them. Now, the third approach is called reinforcement learning, and it's actually quite scary because it corresponds to a parent giving birth to his child and then telling him, hey man, this is the kitchen. You can cook your meals in here. This is the washroom. You can do whatever you need in there. This is the car keys. You can go and drive. I'm out. Bye-bye. So your kid is left alone in the middle of the living room without any basic survival skills, without any knowledge about things. He only knows that this is where the kitchen is. He can cook his meals. This is where the washroom is. And this is where the car keys are. That's it. Now, with a human kid, it will obviously never work. But with a computer, it actually works and it works quite well. So what they would do is they would usually start some kind of a game and they would give the computer a few basic commands. He can either go right, he can either go left, he can jump, he can maybe shoot. But nobody really explains why he needs to jump. Nobody explains the rules of the game and the developer doesn't share any other information about the world or the game on purpose. Now, it's a bit more complicated than that because reinforcement learning has a system of rewards, so it gives the neural network an objective. It's not just running on its own and just, you know, shooting in the dark. But the main important thing to remember is that eventually the neural network will be able to play the game without any issues. It will be able to go to the next level and the next level, and it will learn everything on its own. And just like in real life, whenever we study something on our own, we usually understand it better than if somebody else is trying to teach us. So if you have working experience, that's usually much better than theory. Now, this doesn't scare me up until the point that we connect such network to the internet. We gave our neural network the ability to press on some keys and to evaluate what happens after it presses these keys. So yes, if we only let it control the up and down arrows, it won't be able to do much on Google. But if we let it control the entire keyboard, then we're gonna get in real, real trouble. Now, I am 100% sure that many very, very smart and genius people will disagree with me because reinforcement learning is part of the three main machine learning paradigms. And yet, I am still worried about reinforcement learning and please let me know in the comments below if you guys agree with me if you think i'm just being plain paranoid i really want to hear what you guys think about it now thank you so much for watching this brief introduction to ai i'm actually gonna go ahead and start planning some proper lessons and we will begin with the preceptron so definitely stay tuned we'll see you soon